Hey, Nintendo! We have exposed your dev kits before, and we are about to do it again. This is the Nintendo NDev, an early development kit for the Nintendo Revolution. <coughs> excuse me, Wii. When it was first announced, Nintendo's Revolution console was purely theoretical. In fact, the physical demo unit at E3 2005 was a Fugazi. Fairy dust didn't exist. It was simply an empty plastic shell with nothing in it but promises. To make good on those promises then, by the start of the 2006 Christmas season, Nintendo needed a way for developers to work on Wii software without having a ready-for-market console available. Their solution was a GameCube dev kit with some modifications. Now, that might have been fine for internal developers, but you don't want third-party developers working with what is clearly last-gen hardware. That's embarrassing, even if it was basically what the Wii would end up being. So, over the next 12 months, Nintendo went from a barely modded GameCube T-Dev to a mysterious blurry black box, to a more polished black box with no wireless controllers, to this, the final pre-release dev kit with all the bells and whistles of the retail console. Well, sort of. How do you play games without a disk drive? And what sets this apart from the final retail unit? And who's going to tell you about our sponsor? You Green, I know you want to increase your productivity while using your laptop. I know that. So you should check out the U Green USB-C docking station. You can connect multiple monitors, keyboards, and mice all through a single hub while charging your laptop. Check it out at the link below. This is one of those videos where the writer actually didn't really tell me a whole lot going into it other than, yes, you are allowed to open it. So that's the first thing I'm gonna be doing. That's actually a lie. I was also told to be extremely careful about keeping these screws organized because some of them are really long, some of them are really not long, and if you put the wrong ones in, you can totally foobar the whole thing. Wait, why are we opening it up first? We gotta talk about some of this stuff. At the front, we've got our GameCube memory card slots as well as four ports for GameCube controllers because early versions of the Wii were fully backwards compatible, including four-player multiplayer. Later ones removed the ports even though the hardware technically still existed inside so you could actually hack the support back in. And then later ones cut the feature out entirely, but hey, we're Nintendo, you're gonna buy it anyway. We've also got the SD card slot that was ostensibly for expanding the storage so you could buy things in the Nintendo eShop, but uh, more realistically was just used for hacking the console. Though I actually used mine to transfer all my data to a Wii U, so that's a legit use for it. Sync button for pairing controllers, moving around to this side, a Bluetooth module, and this is fun. You might think, oh, well that's an external antenna for Bluetooth. No, this is for a wired Wiimote. Neat, huh? During development, they were not wireless yet. Over here, we've got a Wi-Fi module. Apparently, wired Wi-Fi was not needed. I mean, why wouldn't they just put an Ethernet port on it? You know what? It doesn't matter. The point is, at the back, the sensor bar, AV multi-out for compositor component, the regular USB ports you'd find on the Wii, and these three USB type Bs that apparently all need to be plugged in in order for this thing to operate. Now that's interesting. Eject button. Eject what? Ooh. It does not have a lot of cooling, hey? I mean, I guess neither did the retail unit. You've just got a single what appears to be a 60 millimeter fan back here. Slim too. And then a passive heatsink that I guess by merit of this being the only other hole in the chassis is gonna get some kind of airflow over it. But like, that's it, hey? That's wild. Right here next to what I assume is the GPU, we've got 64 megabytes of GDDR3. And then over here is what looks like 512 megs of storage. That's double what shipped on the finished console. Now there's supposed to be twice as much RAM as the finished console as well, but I only see the one chip. It's so cool the way that this engineering level hardware will have flexibility built into it that not only will never make its way into the finished product, but might not even be needed for the development product. Like, look at this, Wi-Fi attenuator. So there's a, an antenna module here. But while it's got these two little connectors so that you could add additional antennas to it, they never even do that. They just take a wire and like coil it up in here, as far as I can tell. It's wild, this doesn't do anything, but it could. Woo, well that was easy. That's some crusty thermal comp. Did you take this off? Is that why this looks like poop? I am not the first person to take that apart. And if you want proof of that, check the underside of the top that you took off uh, of it. Oh, okay. Deadly Foes was here. I'm guessing that's who sent us this unit. 
Nope, it came from the person who lent it to Deadly Foes. Really? I mean, do I need to tag it now too? I think that's appropriate. Maybe I'll just put a dent in it. That would be pretty classic. Just, <laughs> just drop the screwdriver. To, no, I, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. a laser engraver on the other side of this wall. I can't, no, I can't do it. There's our ATI graphics chip and our IBM. Did he use an IBM CPU? Yeah, it was power, wasn't it? Yep, the Broadway oh, was right. IBM and the Hollywood was AMD. Super cool. Goes to show you, Nintendo knows gaming. Little CPU, big GPU. Neither of them are powerful, but boy, were they ever little and big. <laughs> now we need to pry it up. Oh! We can glean a lot just from the way the traces are run on the board. Here's our CPU. So the CPU bone's connected predominantly to the GPU bone, which is connected to the video memory bone. Ah! So I said there was supposed to be twice as much VRAM on this thing. That's because half of it is on the underside of this top board. This appears to be pretty much the entire Wii component of this development kit. So what is everything else then? On this board on your right, we find a couple of Xilinx Spartan FPGAs. Because these are field programmable, they could be doing quite literally anything. But based on the fact that there are the three USB ports and a serial port on here, I'd say this is probably running whatever operating system that Nintendo is using to interface with the development kit. As for this boy right here, oh, it's conveniently labeled. This is ndev-power-x2. So power, that's power supply. <laughs> Oh, hilarious. A lot of these big connectors that I was trying to figure out what the heck they do is just carrying power through this board and into this board. Nothing really that interesting down here, just the AC to DC converter for our power supply. Oh, I lied. This does give us a better look at how all of those diagnostic LEDs and buttons and dip switches on the front are in fact wired up to what I said I suspected was the development OS board, this one right here. So hypothesis confirmed. Should we fire it up? Yeah. All right, let's do it. We're hooked up. Our LED is working. Is that a zero? Is that a, I don't know, it's working. <laughs> anyway, we have to run Windows XP. We have to run Windows of some version. I felt XP was the best to go with because 2006, what's your choice? It's XP or Vista. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take XP. I'm a Vista boy. Okay, so we open a DILF. Yep. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get our hands on any first-party Nintendo games because they control their leaks a lot better than third-party developers. But we do have, what, our, our early builds? Yes. Of a handful of games. Well, let's go Simpsons, right? Yeah. Oh, that's a GameCube game. Is it? No. Nope. GCM? Oh, okay. GCM. A, a lot of the architecture for the Wii is backwards compatible with the GameCube. So as a result, a lot of the file names are similar. Hey! There, there we, we go. go. Now it should tell you that you've got the wrong firmware because okay. we don't have the right firmware on here. Cool. But that is a wrong firmware version. If you want to continue, if you'd like ah. to take these. There we go, so. Enter proper menu flow. Okay then, no way. That's how you know it's internal. <laughs> Shut up, I love it. <laughs> Legal text here. And placeholder one. Hey, that's my favorite placeholder. Right up there with placeholder A. Oh. oh, yeah, you want to try going to the Wii menu? Uh, sure. Oh, that doesn't do anything. It does not do anything. It's just a picture. It's not even a button. The, oh. oh, oh, hey. And now you've got the developer menu. Oh, this is wild. I mean, yeah, I got all the cheats then. It's okay, well, let's have unlimited calories and Homer Ball and helium. This is normally not how the game goes. I do have kind of a way of breaking things. Dancing Krusty's always a good sign. Uh, did it just restart? Oh. Oh, well, we've got sound, so. Hey! No. There we go. Oh my god, these loading times, though. Well, at least you're getting some sort of idea as to what's happening. Your memory there is getting used up. It was getting used up. Did I break it? Oh, nope. Hey, here we go. So you have to take the less nutritious thing? Yep. Got him. Oh, shoot. Oh, what? That took off that many points? This might be a good time to cheat. No, I got this, I got this. No, okay. I'm gonna beat him. Oh, what? No, I didn't shake this one! I have negative po Oh, oh no! Can I just punch him? Can I just fight him? I could take him. This is hard. How is this in the first couple minutes of the game? Okay, I think we could try another game. All right. Ooh, it occurs to me, without the chassis cover on, this heat sink is probably not getting a lot of airflow. Well, that seems okay. It's barely even warm. 
I mean, how much did the Wii consume? Like 30 watts or 45 watts or something it like was, that? It was, yeah, so it was 12 volt, 4.8 amps, but most of that energy was used for the disk drive. Right, okay. So people were building portable Wiis that were using, I don't know, maybe like two amps at 12 volts. Wow. Yeah, those portable Wii projects are so cool. Oh yeah, where are these where are these games installed to? How is it connected to that laptop? Is it just via USB? Yeah, there's three USB ports all go into it. And do we know which USBs do what? I think the one labeled DI is for disk input. COM is for communication. How that's used, I'm not sure. Then there's debug, which I want to say would normally go to the IDE, so the like text editor for the code, which in this case, I think it's called Codemasters. Wait, you said this was Goldeneye. That's what it was labeled as. I have not actually opened it up. This would be 2009 Daniel Craig Goldeneye. Yeah, they did a remake. They did a remake without Pierce Brosnan? Well, this, this was Sam right there. What just happened? Is any of this in the real game? Yeah, I don't think we can actually play this at all, uh, which is disappointing. What did I look at? Like, what was that? Hey, look at our 3D models and how they look like Daniel Craig. Other playable deliverables? It almost seems like they're like showing to investors or something to show the product. Yeah. Is this a video? No, I'm doing stuff. Oh. Whoa. Because that's how that works. Uh, oh, whoa. Okay. Oh, hi. Okay. Whoa. Oh, boy. That, she's, she's sensitive. So what's going to happen when you get to the end of the world? I we don't have... know. <laughs> Okay, well that was cool. Yeah. Clearly some proof of concept level stuff. Yeah, okay, now now that I see how interesting these games are, I kind of want to try another one. Wait, David, you had said there was something you wanted to try. What was it? Is this is this it? Am I looking at what this is? No, I think... I think what's, I think. what's a block out? Oh. oh, literally blocks. Okay, you know what I think we might be looking at here is just the, the, the building blocks block out of what these experiences might look like. And then maybe these are slightly better. Yeah, first pass artwork in progress. Okay, what level do we want to have a look at? I want to see the non-deliverable. They never wanted us to see this, Tanner. It was non-deliverable. Oh, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> I kind of want to play this game. <laughs> I got to say, it would be a lot scarier seeing a tank coming at you if it is fluorescent white. <laughs> This is so cool. I have no interest whatsoever in playing this game, but boy, do I ever want to play this early development thing. I always want to see what I'm not supposed to see. Yeah. This is a little bit reminiscent Wait. of... Oh. Hey, here we go. Oh. oh. Um. <laughs> Don't fall down the pit. Number one rule of Goldeneye. Okay, I will try not to fall down a hole this time. Can I go this way? Oh. Nope. No! <laughs> okay, next game, I think. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh. oh, that's some frame rate. Wow. No further optimization necessary. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, this one is not done. Are we, are we overheating at all? Is that what's happening? I don't think so. Because this isn't even 3D. This is just a cutscene. Naruto goes hard. They do their hand gestures and ninja magic. Does it have any secret menus, I wonder? No, I think this one's pretty done. We've got you beaten. Now let's see who we're dealing with here. And I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling kids. I think we're done here. Done telling you about our sponsor. Delete me. In a time when companies are constantly sharing your personal info online without your consent, it's easy to get discouraged. It feels like there's nothing you can do until you hear about the sponsor of this video, Delete Me. Delete Me will help you find hundreds of online profiles sharing your personal info, which could be used by scammers to hit you with a barrage of robocalls and spam emails. And in more extreme cases, it could even lead to identity theft or fraud. Removing all of this information by yourself would be a huge task and take many hours. But with Delete Me, it will happen in just minutes with their software and a team of experts. 
On average, Delete.me finds and removes over 2,000 pieces of data for a customer in their first two years. So if you want to get your personal information removed from search results on the web, go to joindeleteme.com slash Linus Tech Tips and use code LTT for 20% off. If you guys enjoyed this video, you might enjoy our previous look at the 3DS dev kit or I think the PS3 one was really interesting. I like the PS3 one. Yeah, check out the PS3 one.